guys, you're welcome to Frankly Speaking with Glory again. My name is Glory Elijah. So today I will be talking about how to survive in a Nigerian work environment. Yeah, I told you guys last time that my website is now up. So all you have to do is type on your browser www.franklyspeakingwithglory.com and you will find my website. On my website, there's my blog and there's my YouTube videos. So if you need all of my content all in one space, there you have it. Did I tell you that I am also a storyteller? I am a writer. I do a lot of creative writings and I have some amazing series on my website that you would be interested in reading. So if you're a lover of short stories that run into episodes, all of those things are on my website. Anyways guys, so the reason I brought the topic of the issue of my website is because if you go to my blog section, you will find that I have written an article about types of people in a Nigerian work environment. And a lot of people commented, that was while I was still hosted by Blogger. A lot of people commented and talked about, oh my god, Glory, you're so true. Anyways, I wouldn't waste a lot of time telling you about the contents of that article. But if you want to see it, just click on the website link in the description box below and you would find it. Alright, so moving on to today's topic, guys on how to survive in a Nigerian work environment oh my god if you can relate with this topic you will know that it is absolutely not easy to cope in a Nigerian work environment if you're working in an international work environment let's say a foreign company based here in Nigeria let's say within on a scale of 1 to 100 you'll be able to survive let's say Ah, uh, 70 percent you'll be able to survive you know why because the people that work in that place they come from a different culture they come from different places and they have a different viewpoint of life and i'm not saying that their mentality is actually higher than that of nigerians no that is not what i am saying what i am saying is those foreign people share they just know how to just make things easy for you they just know how to make life easy for you i'm not talking about indians because people always complain about indians but that's by the way coming down to nigerians my nigerian people my brothers and sisters why do you always make it very difficult to work with you why do you always make it very difficult you guys take things too seriously you guys take things too hard like you guys make life feel so hard i mean whatever i'm going to be talking about today is going to be based on my experience because working in different organizations over time i have just devised a way on how to cope so number one tip on how to survive in a nigerian work environment be nice be absolutely nice honestly if you are not nice then everybody will become your enemy you will just start having enemies from different departments different sections of the company so you just have to be nice and when i say nice nice not to the point of eye service so but nice in a genuine kind of way a lot of us have different perspectives of life a lot of us have different way of doing things but then all the same just be nice just be nice number two be very helpful yeah be very very helpful and when i say be very helpful please do not mistake it for i too sabi yeah everybody is there not just to work but to also learn and grow in the process so if you're the sort of person that you find your colleague trying to do something and you obviously know that that person might not be able to execute that task and you want to go and become um the the superman of the office you know i too sabi i can do it, i can do it and then you're gonna tell the person don't worry i'll do it for you please it's wrong allow the person to do it you can only render assistance right you can only be helpful but you have no right whatsoever and i feel it's extremely rude trying to take off a person's task it will make that person feel insecure and it will also make that person see you as a threat so be nice number one number two be helpful but not in an itu sabi way or over the top kind of way all right so number three number three be yourself I mean, the Nigerian work environment has created this very annoying mentality that the moment you are employed in a place, you have to kiss everybody's ass, you have to start doing a model. You have to become a slave. You have to now reduce yourself from that dignifying standard that you are used to, to nothing, all because you're trying to, to 
to show people that you are good or because you're trying to show people that oh i am very very nice please and please i am saying it here on this channel do not allow anybody whatsoever to 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 lower you to an undignified position in the work environment i am not saying that you should be rude i am not saying that you should be aggressive or violent or ill-mannered to you know your bosses or even your colleagues but all i am saying is just be yourself and never you lower your standards all because you're trying to fit in to a particular carcass that they've created in, in, in your work environment all right so just be yourself and number four tip on how to survive in a nigerian work environment <laughs> never ever join in a gossip never the moment you do that you see those people that you are gossiping with i swear they will just turn the tables around and snitch up on you and switch up the whole situation yeah I know of someone that has found themselves in that kind of situation before, you know, two other colleagues were gossiping about this particular colleague and then he went ahead to go and like, hey, what happened now? What are you talking about? And they're like, no mind that idiot, no mind that person, no mind that one. They started saying a lot of rubbish about this other person that they were gossiping about and then this guy was just like, ah, no, wow, anyways, it is well. And the guy walked away. Guess what? When the gist came out, you see those two snitches that were talking about this other person? They now said, ah, eh, this guy was there now when we were talking about it. He even said that you are this, he even said that you are that and that was how the gay happened. I swear, if my brother knew <laughs> that that kind of thing would have happened, I'm sure that he would have run away. I think his village people were seriously at work at that point in his life. And that was how he was sacked off the company. So the next point I'm going to be giving, guys, is never ever you feel entitled to a position. Yeah, the reason is because that position that you are occupying, <clears throat> there was someone there before you and that person either resigned or the person was promoted or the person was sacked out of the company. Yeah, the moment you start feeling like you are entitled and your colleagues or management start getting a, a whiff of your pride, they would start seeing you as a threat to the company and then they would remove you. Always remember that nobody is irreplaceable. Everybody can be replaced. They can remove you from a position, promote you or demote you. They can remove you from a position probably just because one slight mistake that you made. And trust me guys, the country is hard enough. And that's a problem that a lot of people in Nigeria, in Nigeria has. Everybody, almost everybody feels like they are entitled to one thing or the other. Well, trust me, in a Nigerian work environment, nobody is entitled to anything. Even the CEO of a company can be replaced. Yes, if you do not know that now, know that now. I tell you guys, crazy things, there are crazy things happening in the Nigerian work environment. And trust me, Nigerians are entitled though. But trust me, your other colleagues, they do not like it when somebody has too much pride. Even if you are the highest paid in your company, even if you are the one that is more skillful, even if you are the one that always, always has private audience with your boss, even if you are the one whose opinion is always, always welcome and taken, even if you are the one that is always sent out for that international meeting, even if you are the one that is always sent to travel out to different countries for board meetings, for events and ceremonies, and then it starts getting into your head and then you start feeling like, oh, more without me eh, this company cannot exist well sad news without you that company can exist there are a million and one people in the world out there who are looking for your position and the moment they start seeing that you are becoming too much of the company to handle or more people will start telling their relatives i beg you get person they find this job i beg get person where sabi do it i beg get person where where you look for work for your family till and say opportunity day for a company your company did not put out any vacancy out there but nigerians just love to bring into their environment people that they can control and the moment that they they feel like they can no longer control you the moment they feel like you are getting out of hand they, instead of them to even caution you they would rather kick you out replace you with someone that's going to be doing their bidding they would rather replace you with someone that they can control so please never ever feel entitled always shove your pride under your carpet in your house 
before you come to work in an Nigeria work environment. Otherwise, they will lower you to nothing. And the last tip on how to survive in a Nigerian work environment, guys, is never ever gossip about your boss. That is the ultimate sin. Yeah, that is the ultimate sin. Never ever, never ever gossip about your boss. Because if you do, <laughs> now that Jenna Neko takes her cue. Yeah, I used to have this colleague in a place I worked before. A man, a married man. This man, there is no day he will come to work that he will not say one bad thing about his boss. He's always complaining about his boss's style of leadership. He's always complaining about the way his boss manages the finance of the company. He's always saying that, eh, hey, this man, you know, Sabi, this work. This man, hey, how can he do this like this? How can't he do that like that? Come, let me ask you a question. Is it your company? Are you the boss? Are you the one paying salary? Are you the one paying yourself salary? Seriously, if your boss doesn't know a business and he employed you, so what's your business? That is the reason why you are there. If your boss has no knowledge about IT and he employed you who's an IT professional, so that is the reason why you are there and you have to deliver. You have to work. Work and prove yourself. You will submit the work. Prove your knowledge and your skill and let everybody be at peace. Why do you have to judge your boss anyways? Your boss doesn't have to know the business to employ you. That is why he puts you, who is more knowledgeable about that field, to take care of business. Yeah. I mean, if you know that you are not the one paying your salary, then please never ever you gossip about your boss because it is wrong on all levels. There are better ways of bringing up um, your, your, your contributions or your suggestions or even airing your opinion in an organization. And one of the best ways to do that is when people are having a meeting. Yes, when people are having a meeting, if it's a small company or a small team, yeah, well, you can do that when people are having a, a meeting. Or if it's a very, very big organization or maybe a conglomerate, you can go through the chain of authority. You can talk to your supervisor. You can Your supervisor can talk to the management. The management can talk to the director. And that's how the information will go up and up and up until it is accepted. So, guys, never ever you allow your village people to get a hold of you. Please. Nigeria is very, very hard. And if you know that you're not from a privileged background or a privileged family or you yourself is not privileged to be able to take care of yourself then please never ever gossip about your boss i know that i said that that's the final tip but then i have one last last tip be friends with your security guard be friends with the gate man of the company i know why you see the gate man of the company that person could be a lifesaver to you. That person is the one that is going to put in a good or bad word to management. Because I know a lot of companies that do that. At the end of the day, they ask security, what do you think about this person? What do you think about that person? Do you think this person is okay? Do you think this person is good enough? I tell you, and trust me, owners of companies, bosses of companies, they take the opinion of security men or gate men very, very seriously. Yes. So, that's all for today's episode of Frankly Speaking with Glory, guys. Remember, as usual, if you have anything you want to talk about on this topic, if you have any suggestion or contribution, please comment in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Just click on the subscribe button and you will become a part of this family. So till next time, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.